standing up against the occupation of Haiti. They were saying they want their president back, that they didn't, they didn't want their votes to be, to be uh, taken away from them because the government of President Arisid was building schools, hospitals, uh, was providing um, equipment needed by our, by our farmers, and was providing clean sources of drinking water. What, what crime was there? And we expected Lula, when he came as head of this enterprise, we thought he would be siding with the Haitian people, just like Haiti had stood up to the colonizers with the people of South America for their freedom. But instead, he was their doberman attacking the people of Haiti. Gerald, do you want to call on people or shall I? Okay. So we're going to do it. Okay. Do, today we do it by raised hands. Okay. You go ahead. What do you think Lula did this? Um, it's been mentioned by a number of people that Brazil was hoping that uh, at the time Brazil was in a lot of difficulty with Bush, the son, with the, because of their strong position against the war in Iraq. And they said Haiti became like a common ground for them to come together. And also they said that, um, and again, when I say they, I mean a number of scholars have said that Brazil was vying for a seat at the United Nations. And so they wanted to prove that they could be as bad, I guess, as the US, France, and Canada. And so that's what, that's what some people have said. And I wouldn't discount that racism also may play a part in this, because um, Haitians have been, um, African people, people of darker skin, have been looked upon as inferior and what have you. So, you know, there is a number of things here that may, that may be at play. Okay, so, come in, Norma. I got a note from James Mann saying that the decision by the uh, Senate is motivated by racism because those people are very afraid that black people are, black and brown people are becoming more and more numerous in our society and this is a way for them to retain their power to keep oppression going on against them. This is just one step. You can't have justice and still have equality or, or you know, reasonable behavior. I was very surprised to see what he had found to put this together. Mm -hmm. I thought you'd be interested. And, and just to bring that to let you know the thinking of people in the streets of Haiti, of the grassroots in Haiti, people also link that to 1826 what Lula did, and what not just Lula, many supposed socialist countries of South America. Now, I, I have to exclude Venezuela and Cuba and, and the CARICOM countries stood against the Bush administration, and they never sent people to be part of MINUSTA. But a number of socialist countries, or claimed to be socialists, provided their troops provided support for the policy of occupation of Haiti and in maintaining the, the and in helping to, to, prevent, to prevent the people's government, the people's power government. And so what, what happened was people linked that a lot with what happened with Simon Bolivar in 1826 at the big conference. It was a conference of uh, Pan-Americanism where Alexandre Petru and Simon Bolivar had worked out beforehand when Simon Bolivar was in Haiti, how Haiti, how they needed the coalition of the nations, the newly independent nations of the Americas. So that conference was happening in 1826, I believe, or 1825. And Haiti was supposed to be in attendance. Haiti had been invited to attend. And uh, at the last minute, the U.S. said they wouldn't sit down with Haiti because of they wouldn't sit down with the N-word, you know? Wow. And so um, Simon Bolivar, to his shame, disinvited Haiti from participating. So when Lula pulled that stunt, people in Haiti referred that to, said they, they want historical memory, and they compared that to the same thing that Simon Bolivar had done to us. Okay. Um, okay. 
Thank you both for your presentation. It's been really informational. Um, I have a couple of questions. In, during, before the Haitian Revolution began, you mentioned Ubuntu. Could you talk a little bit about how the slaves communicated using voodoo? And also, the second question is, at the end of C.L. Ron James's book, The Black Jenkins, he mentions that Dessaline uh, has himself um, coronated as emperor. Could you, even though there's a constitution that's been created, could you talk a little bit about the aftermath of the, of the how, how the government was operating after the revolution, after the constitution? Right. Um, the, the part about Vodou, Vodou is, and we call it Vodou, and it means uh, spirit in the phone language from what I've picked up, but there are other interpretations. But basically, people agree. It's an African-based religion, and so you have different faiths and beliefs among the various Africans. And, it's, um, and that's what our foremothers and forefathers, they used to maintain their spirit, not only their spirituality, but their humanity in this very dehumanizing, under this dehumanizing um, structure that was slavery, system that was slavery. And that's what let them remember their history, who they were, that they were human beings. And the prayer of Bookman at that big congress of Bwakaima calling on the laws, the spirits of Africa, that our God wants us to be free. Our gods wants us to be full human beings, but the gods of the Europeans wants us to be subjugated, wants us to be slaves. And so that was the, the and, and let me shorten it right there. So in terms of Dessalines, yes, he did. He became emperor, uh, Emperor Jean-Jacques Dessalines, and there was a coronation and of, so his last title, he was named governor general at first. Uh, head of state of the island, governor general, but then he changed that to um, emperor. Right. I just, uh, I want, before I, I go, just a quick, quick just, question. Just on, on that point, though, I just want to say this: the, the question of citizenship and the franchise of citizenship, that is voting, was relatively new to the planet, and I would uh, submit to you. Uh, it's not uh, like I'm agreeing with or covering up or trying to go along with. But I will say that um, Napoleon also uh, <laughs> crowned himself as the emperor of France and uh, as part of that thermidor, that is the stopping of the revolution. Um, I, I see that, uh, by the way. Would you please cover your I just did. Okay. Hold on, y'all. Let's not. Let's, let's please. Okay. Anyway, what's what's I think what's really important to understand here is the thrust of that movement, and not just the the things that you know may have attracted our attention. You know, emperor. Oh, I I don't like emperors. You know, but because you know what I like, I like freedom, and and definitely. Um, did, and this is a point that Pierre pounded into me, that when they killed to someone, they captured him and imprisoned him, if you have the bourgeois sense of individuality and the cult of leadership, the revolution, that should have been it. That was it. Okay, let's go, let's get on back in there, put the chain on me, and let's, that's not what happened. In fact, Dessaline led that military struggle to fruition, and they defeated Napoleon's army. That's what happened. Never forget that. Now, eventually, he was assassinated. I mean, two years later, that's yes. 1806. But be clear. So, you know, yes, that what you said is absolutely true. By the way, I, I urge you, if you haven't read the book, Black Jacob is a very, very thorough and worthwhile book to read. But I would say that what I remember about Dessalines is that he was resolute. So for instance, when Napoleon's general, Leclerc, mm -hmm. tortured 500 slaves that he captured by burying them up to their neck 
and putting like hot molasses on their heads and then having insects pick away at them until they were dead. Desaline immediately captured 500 planters and hung them immediately. I'm not, I don't get any particular joy from that, but the fact is that was Desaline's method, okay? And eventually they did win. So there was a bit of a collective leadership left behind after mm -hmm. Toussaint was captured. And that's the real lesson, that we don't need great leaders alone. We need collective leadership to sure. carry on our struggle. Finish. Okay, so before you, I go to you, one quick question of clarification. Uh, you know, um, uh, Haitian uh, elected president uh, Aristide was was kidnapped. What, what was that in George Bush's time, or it yes, was yes. under it Clinton? Was, no, it was under uh, George Bush. Bush. Actually, the whole process was started by Clinton, by yeah. the Clinton government. And then Bush actually did the, the dirty job of yeah, the coup. Actually, and so, but I want while you mention Aristide, Aristide has a book called Eyes of the Heart. I highly recommend this book. We do sell it. I don't have any copies with me, but Eyes of the Heart that was his response to Clinton's globalization, and uh, he told Clinton, "No, we are not going along with that. It doesn't work for our people." So the name of the book is Eyes of the Heart. Uh, seeking a path for the poor in the age of globalization. And that was published in 1999. And also, this book called Investir dans le Monde. They always say, well, Haiti is a chaotic place and all of that. But the Haitian people have articulated, did articulate, a plan for the rebuilding of Haiti. This was published also in 1999. In, it means investing in people. And that was the Lavalas Party platform, where it details all of the resources, the mineral resources of Haiti, the needs of the population, and how, going, how they are going to invest, how they are going to pay for various programs to benefit the people. So, you know, many times they, they come up with plans, but those plans have nothing to do with us. It's a plan to line their own pockets as imperialists. But here is the plan of the people of Haiti. And that's what the people are working on, on the Formula Valas political party of President Aristide. Next question. Uh, Pierre, you mentioned um, the UN was in, was in control of the police in Haiti. Yes. It, could you say maybe a little bit about the history and the role of the UN in Haiti? Yes, the UN, uh, as an institution, I'll have to say this, that the UN, has been in, in the recent past in Haiti pretty, pretty terrible, mm. very bad. They have sided with the elite, with the 1% in Haiti. They have worked very closely with all the repressive, and I mean the killing machine that is controlled by the 1% in Haiti. And so they brought in the cholera epidemic that has killed close to more than 15,000 Haitians, God knows how many, because I hear all kinds of figures, but certainly over 15,000 people. And that cholera epidemic was particularly a brutal thing, which the Haitian people, see that's why we connect the present with our past. People say they did the same thing to the original Arawak and Taino uh, inhabitants of the islands, the people who Christopher Columbus called Indians. They said this is a repeat of that. Because what the UN did, they brought in a contingent from Nepal at the time when there was a full-blown cholera epidemic in Nepal. Haiti hadn't known cholera for the past 100 years. Mm. And they brought them in knowing that there was this full-blown crisis in Nepal. Nobody was tested or anything. Mm. They put them in a, in, um, in a military compound you know, it, right there near the main river of Haiti, the Artibonite River, where there is a lot of rice. That's the rice growing region in Haiti. Those guys were defecating and their waste were being pumped and dumped into the main, into one of the tributaries that led into the main river. Mm. So everybody downstream in October 2010 started getting sick because they were getting that stuff, you know. And 
they did that in violation of their own protocol for sanitation. And when people in Haiti started talking about people are getting sick, the UN, instead of mobilizing all of its forces, because they have helicopters, they have all-terrain vehicles, they have all of these tons of money, personnel, and everything, they kept putting out information denying they had anything to do with it. When the people in the area were going around photographing the pipe that was leading from their camp into the main river. And the, the vehicles that were dumping the feces into the main river. And the UN, it wasn't until recently that they, that they said, well, they may have had to do some to do with it. So it's been terrible. Then we've had a number of massacres, not just one massacre, that you could say, well, people panic and shout at people. They did it. I have another video on this where it shows the UN shooting at demonstrators, shooting at demonstrators. So, you know, and they have accompanied the Haitian police in various um, massacres whereby the Haitian police, um, uh, the UN has provided them with the logistical support and supervision. And I, let me just say this. I understand and sympathize with people <laughs> that hope and wish for some help and reprieve from this terror. And I understand how people could misidentify the UN as a body that is going to play that role. Clearly, that is an illusion. And I think there's no escape but to realize and to carry out the understanding that it is only the international <coughs> proletariat, the working class, That's right. that has the power to put an end to this madness. That's right. And if you don't learn anything else, learn that. Okay, before I go to Rusha, there was somebody else who had raised hand on this side. Uh, no, no, hold on. Uh, you, you didn't raise a hand. Uh, there was somebody else? Who? Okay, Rusha. Or should I do next? Okay. Um, thank you very much. The thing that I appreciated the most from both of you is being very concrete on how idea of freedom is infectious. It spreads. Mm. It goes over thousands of miles and across generations. Mm. This um, that's the key that I would want to take away from this and to keep projecting. Um, and by the way, um, Marx also urged U.S. to have a black uh, brigade in the Civil War. So that, that uh, since Marx is Ooh, kind of to important to us, yeah. uh, I yeah. thought that that would be important to mention. Yes. I think what, um, what is really key for us now is what happens after. I mean, Haiti had a revolution and we're still trying to complete it, right? Yes. The U.S. had kind of a revolution, and certainly there have been any number of movements that were saying, we want the dream that animated the revolution to complete it, right? That's what civil rights civil movement war. was out around, right? So the question is, how, how do we complete it? What would it mean to complete that dream? And I think that you were very good in expressing the difference between wanting to save the economy versus establishing a society where people live with dignity. And I think that question of what is freedom, what do we do after we win power, that that's really the key question. And I just wanted to mention that we're going to be Taking that up on the 16th when we take up the question of prisoner struggle here. Okay. And after they won uh, their reprieve from solitary mm -hmm. confinement and are now trying to continue the movement, it's also this idea of what is freedom, who we are as human beings. So we're at 12.30 now, but I think we should take one or two more questions just and just very brief, very answer. brief responses, if, if that's okay. Yes. Um, um, very briefly, I'll say this. I brought with me some we put together, the Haiti Action Committee. It's a booklet called We Will Not Forget the Achievements of Lavalas in Haiti. So part of the process of completing the Haitian Revolution 
was by this government of the people of Jean Bertrand Aristide started implementing, taking the resources of the state. For one, one concrete example, the Haitian military. It was disbanded. The people said, we don't need this military because they do nothing for us. They are just oppressing us. So let's get rid of it. So the military was disbanded and the monies were from that military. 40% of the budget used to go into the military. So the monies were taken and invested in building schools, building hospitals, so that during President Aristide's time, more schools were built in the entire country than the 190 years of history before. See, there was investment in that. The Haitian uh, military was disbanded, their headquarters was decommissioned and turned into the Ministry for Women's Affairs to deal with the needs of women. And a lot of, and they guided those investments towards women and the family. Uh, this, this is online. You can get it, HaitiSolidarity.net. I have a couple of um, uh, things here. So what the people of Haiti are doing to rebuild is basically trying to implement uh, the plan, their own agenda for what the, the, the society would be. One of the things that we help with the Haiti Emergency Relief Fund, we help at the community level. People are not sitting there in the face of all this repression, just taking it. They are building schools, they are building uh, clinics. Uh, one of the examples is the UNIFA, the University of the Aricid Foundation. Well, now they are engaged in, and they rebuilt it starting in March 2011, and now it just, it's going to graduate its third class of doctors, nurses, and physical therapists, and other various disciplines, and they are in the process of building a hospital. Because with all that money, the main hospital in Haiti has been completely wrecked, no investment in healthcare or anything. So that hospital, we are engaged in helping them rebuild. It's to um, directly impact the population. So there is a lot of stuff that people are doing at the grassroots level. And they are being consistently attacked. And they are destroying what the people are building. But they are determined to rebuild as they are fighting the struggle. So I have a question for Jean. Uh, I, think, uh, I think many people want this to continue a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Can we reschedule our meeting on another Sunday? Uh, I don't think we can reschedule the meeting, but you're the boss here. Uh, we do need to have a meeting, but yeah. I suggest it is a meeting of the planning committee, and we need to plan to have these people back. Uh, we're <laughs> built through into April, but maybe sometime we can fit you into our schedule, because I think it's really important to understand what's going on now in Haiti, in terms of the past and uh, the struggles that are going on right now. So yes. uh, we do have to bring it to an end. You're the boss. No, sure. no. It's, 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 let, uh, let me say one decide. thing, yes. because this yes. is Black History Month. I have to say I mentioned Haiti in communication with many various countries. But here in the US, um, Haiti had, was in constant communication yeah. with black people in the US who were enslaved. Mm -hmm. And many of the slave rebellions that had occurred, the Nat Turner, Gabriel Poisset, Denmark right, Vesey, yeah. Haiti was right. very it's much a part of, um, they sense? looked to Haiti as an inspiration, yeah. as a symbol. If they can do it there, we can do it here. I want to mention also something I said to Gerald, that when um, Haiti had declared three days of mourning, a mourning period when John Brown was, was executed, Haiti had declared, and in Haiti, there is John Brown Boulevard, and there is Martin Luther King Boulevard, and the two of them intersect. You see? Very right dangerous. today. Right, right today. today. It's terribly dangerous. <laughs> okay, so and this, is, black this goes way back. Black liberation is the most dangerous thing going on on earth. Okay, so we've extended the session till uh, for 1245. So Merci. 10 more minutes. Merci. 10 more minutes. Anybody, uh, I think uh, this yeah, a woman, uh, yeah, Le you were you oh, are I next. I just wanted to say something that. Yeah. Next week, next Sunday, I believe there's a, a, a talk of various people about Latin America in general, and one of the people from the Haiti Action Committee will be on that talk to oh, okay. talk about Haiti. Where? Okay. Here? Marilyn Langlois here. here at 10:30. Okay. Next Sunday. Okay. Well, so, yeah. any other questions here well, or comment? Okay, go ahead. Well, here in Cameroon, what you said is that there are many plans to. Uh, involved and basically people 
But it sounds like what's coming through is this. Unless you can defend yourself, this doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. So come in and take us down, take you over, destroy it. So that's got to be a primary thought in mind of people. How do you think like running? You need muscle. Uh, I, I, I agree with you. And, uh, and I'm sure that Haiti didn't continue to exist because people haven't been defending themselves. So there are, I don't know the details of what the defense is, but I can tell you this, um, at least in a couple of instances that I know, okay? Because it was published. A lot of the stuff is not published. And, uh, and even if it were published, I, okay, we'll leave it at that. But in any case, I have to tell you that in, there are certain places in Haiti uh, where people have tried to go in many places to repress the population, they haven't been able to do that. And, and otherwise, Haiti wouldn't exist, the Haitian people wouldn't exist if they had, ju if they had just walled over and That's played right. nice. That's so right. I'll leave it at that. And I but I understand your point. I would like to just leave with this final point, and that is, one, I, I would like you to uh, forgive me for fiddling around uh, with all this stuff, but we are the technical crew, we the, the crew crew, we, we try to do it all, which just in a small way points to the need for an organization that handles all of that. And part of what needs to happen, of course, is we need you to take this information and share it with our young people because they are going to carry that banner forward and keep that in mind the young people really are okay the future. okay thank you before people leave i if you want to see it on youtube i'm going to be putting up this program this coming week on youtube and if you give me your Email address. I will include. I'll send you the link. Great. Thank so, uh, and what is the, your source. What, what is the link on YouTube? How can you get to? Okay. So the you don't always get it, but we have a website called ICSS space Marxist. All small small letters, lowercase letters. ICSS space Marxist. No S in the end. So that's the channel on YouTube. If you go there, it'll give you some programs, but it doesn't give you the entire scene. It's kind of at random they pull up. So the best thing would be I send you the links. Uh, I, I have a whole list of most of the people. I will send it to them. Those are, have already received it. But anybody here who has not received the links from me in the past, and you give me your email address, I'll make sure you get included in this and future programs. Are you saying yeah. if you're on a mailing list, you're going to send it automatically? Yes. The ICSS is the Institute uh, for the Critical Study of Society, and it comes at the bottom of the page of uh, notice that you get every week, once a week. Good. So what I'm saying is that uh, the sign-up sheet is not necessarily for this, because everybody doesn't want to get email from me with every program. So if you're interested, just give me your email address and I'll include you for this program and future programs that we record and put up on YouTube. We have about over 200 subscribers by now from around the world and it's, it's gaining more and more people. People are watching some of these programs in India and commenting mm -hmm. on it. And I think your program will be watched a lot. Thank That's you. it's very, very informative great information which we didn't have all these this both of yours so thank you very much thank you okay is that the end of the program um, or somebody oh the, yeah, there's one yeah, more question the information is nice changing and I'd like to see uh, people uh, make the connection between uh, what was happening with the fight against Napoleon to the Louisiana purchase yes Napoleon well, suffered so many losses uh, that he uh, sold the Louisiana purchase as a, mm -hmm. as a bargain because he needed funds Right. And so because of the fight of the Haitian people. There you go. You got it. That's right. Yeah. You got office. it. I know. So let's we'll receive that and share it. Share it. Share it. YouTube. And Shadow uh, okay. is where it means property of uh, slavery. And a lot of people don't really know the difference between the type of slavery uh, that you hear about with the Roman practice, with the Greek practice, or with many African countries practice among themselves. They practice the form of slavery. One 
tribe beat another, then that tribe, uh, you were like prisoners of war and you like slaves. Yes. But the type of slavery practiced in the United States, was white chattel slavery, white was very dehumanizing. And never in human history had captured slaves been considered not humans. Never in human history had, had slaves be, been uh, the very idea that humanity uh, been questioned. So uh, tribes were separated. It was forbidden to speak your language, forbidden to practice your culture. And so a lot, uh, from, for hundreds of years, it was a death sentence for a slave to be educated. And this also has a connection with the fight in Haiti, because the slave owners in the United States were so afraid after the Haitian Revolution that they, they really uh, made it almost impossible for slaves. Uh, they, they enacted severe penalties for slaves to be educated. So I think people really need to know the difference between shallow slavery and the slavery practiced uh, in other places That's around true. the world yeah, during much. different historical periods. Mm. You know, Thank you for that. For, for, for close to 60 years after the US, after Haiti became independent, the US would not recognize Haiti's independence until the Civil War, right? But it, this is the connection for us to be in solidarity with each other. Because black people, as Joel mentioned, jumped into the struggle. Brothers like, uh, and sisters, Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman, because of the power of, the, of this movement, then the victory was they had to recognize Haiti being an independent nation. So as we move together, we impact each other's struggle. And in various communities in the US, Black people in the U.S. were so proud of Haiti after the revolution that they were naming their communities Haiti. They were spelling it H-A-Y-T-I, which was the old spelling of Haiti. So many neighborhoods that you'll see, Walter Riley mentioned in North Carolina, right across from his neighbor, there was the community called Haiti, and that's where it was from. And my sister did some research in Virginia also. So. Um, I'm saying that uh, we move together, together we can win this uh, global struggle for justice and equality. Thank you. I just want to make one Your quick thing <laughs> following what Ursula mentioned, Marx's connection, uh, his comment on the Civil War in the United States. It was uh, Engels, he was writing, he was here. And he was saying that, uh, uh, or he was writing about the Civil War and saying, the, the Northerners are going to lose the war because the Southerners have the best generals and Northern Army is not fighting right. And Marx said, you know, you're too impressed, uh, Engels, by, by this military thing. The mm -hmm. moment a black uh, freed army regiment is created, it will drive fear into the Southern Army and demoralize it wow. because the blacks will fight like hell. That's right. That's right. And that's, that's that what actually that's what happened. And we always like to end our programs with a quote from Marx. Yes. So thank you. The thank you very much. We'll start at one o'clock.